Well, welcome to question 85 of the Secunda Secunde. The topic for uh, this lecture is uh, sacrifice or sacrifices, uh, and I am Dr. Thibault. <coughs> now we're looking at, under the area of justice, uh, we're looking at the virtue of religion. Now we've looked at interior acts, uh, and now we are looking at external acts of religion which are uh, attributed again to uh, uh, the virtue of religion under the virtue of justice. Um, now we looked at last time uh, question 84 which was adoration and now we were looking at other external things offered to God uh, namely uh, sacrifices. In this section we also have oblations or first fruits tithes and vows. To get the definition of what St. Thomas is talking about when he says sacrifices, we really have to jump ahead to Article 3 uh, in uh, response to Objection 3 to get, uh, to get his definition. So uh, to compare what he's talking about, I think it's more interesting uh, now than waiting till later. Um, Sacrifices require that something be done to a thing which is offered to God. So something is offered to God and something happens to it. Uh, so when an animal has been offered to God, the animal gets killed, uh, slain, and burnt. Uh, when bread in the Eucharist is offered to God, the, bl the bread is blessed, broken, uh, and eaten. Uh, something happens to it. Um, so and the thing that happens to it is something which he defines as something sacred. Uh, a facit sacrum. Uh, there's, a, there's a sacred thing that is done to it, which creates it into a sacrifice. Now the other two uh, we will be looking at later, but just to show it in comparison, uh, oblations are an offering to God, although nothing necessarily happens to it. So people can offer money in the collection or bread uh, that they will later use in mass uh, or once somebody could uh, offer a statue or uh, or an altar or land uh, for the church um, this is not a sacrifice uh, because you know we don't take the statue of Mary that was donated and um, do something to it. It's uh, it's used as a, as an object that people use to help pray uh, within their own personal lives, uh, personal spiritual lives. So something doesn't happen to it. Um, so everything sacrificed is an oblation. Uh, right? If somebody gives an animal in the temple law, um, that is an oblation. It's given uh, to God but it is then sacrifice. So uh, every, ob every sacrifice is an oblation, but not every oblation is a sacrifice. So, so people give a statue uh, to a church, uh, have given uh, an oblation, but they haven't given a sacrifice. Now tithes are neither sacrifices nor oblations, uh, according to St. Thomas, because they are, they are offered to the ministers of divine worship and not to God. So uh, what does the the Levite uh, Levitical priests do with uh, their 10%? Well, they use it for their housing and their food and their clothing and the things they need to survive. So this isn't actually given to God, but to the priesthood. So uh, this would be uh, need not an oblation or a sacrifice, uh, according to St. Thomas. Now, back to the beginning. Uh, our sacrifice is part of natural law. Now, we, don't, we haven't looked at many things that are part of natural law. So this being uh, an element of natural law, uh, St. Thomas says yes, because if we look to uh, history, uh, and he's looking at it from his own time period, um, every culture they seem to encounter uh, from the ancient world, people offered sacrifices in one way or another. Uh, since it seems like every culture they offered sacrifices, it seems to be something intrinsic, it's something natural, that all people uh, around the world end up offering sacrifices. 
uh, to a god. Therefore, he says it's part of natural law. It becomes universal. Uh, now, natural reason, he says, tells man uh, that he is subject to a higher being, which we call God. Um, this, uh, this starts with us realizing that we are imperfect and we're broken and that we need uh, help to become more, more what we are called to be. This sounds very much like the Alcoholics Anonymous uh, realizing that you, know, you have a problem and that you're helpless to fix it without the, the grace of God. Um, very basic, but we still use that principle to, uh, today. Uh, and, and this is, goes back to St. Thomas's view of it. Um, because this is natural, right? Uh, AA is not particularly Christian or one denomination or another. It seems to be a universal thing, realizing our broken, fallen state and needing uh, uh, somebody greater than us in order to help us, which we call God. Um, uh, natural reason tells man that he is subject to higher being. Yep. Uh, and natural reason dictates that man should use certain sensibles uh, by offering them to God in signs in, in the uh, subjection and honor. Uh, I think that means due to him, not die to him, uh, due to him. Um, so it's kind of natural. It's built in within our own uh, human psyche, it seems like, is if you acknowledge that God is God and that uh, God is due honor, that we use tangible things, uh, certain sensibilities, right? Things of the senses, things you can smell, touch, feel, uh, taste, um, these elements. We try to, in some ways, offer them to God out of justice that's due to God. Um, this seems to be natural and universal, according to St. Thomas. Now, people today may disagree because if you look across the modern world, you don't necessarily see uh, this universally, but across the ancient world or the medieval world, St. Thomas sees this as uh, a somewhat obvious idea. Um, sacrifice is offered to God alone, Article 2. Uh, now, sacrifice uh, is offered outwardly to, rep to represent uh, an internal spiritual sacrifice. So there's two elements of it being a sacrifice. Uh, you have to internally have that disposition. You have to internally intend it first. Uh, if somebody just kills a bull, that's not a sacrifice. If you intend to kill a bull as part of a ritual, uh, which is given in sacrifice to God, then uh, then it becomes a, a uh, an animal sacrifice. But it has to have that intention. Otherwise, it's just called butchering, right? It's just called killing. Uh, it's, it's, it has to have its particular intention to start with. Um, somebody doesn't accidentally uh, perform an act of sacrifice. Uh, one has to intend it first. It has to be an internal drive. The divine law, uh, the, the punishment of death, uh, is assigned to those who offer divine honor to uh, another other than God. Well, this we see for in the the book of Exodus with uh, the golden calf, right? This idea of honoring that which is not God brings death. Um, so therefore, very strongly, St. Thomas is showing that uh, sacrifice it should be offered to God alone and not to any others. Uh, now, St. Thomas, he in the objections, he, he points to this idea that some could say that, well, we have... Uh, temples to uh, saints. Uh, we have altars to saints. And uh, in some ways, that's not entirely incorrect, right? That's not, we, we don't, we wouldn't call things temples to saints. Uh, but we could say we have altars, uh, you know, side altars that have particular saints uh, images over them. So the main altar high altar uh, is imagery is very common like very specifically to uh, Jesus in the crucifixion side altars if you didn't know any better you could say well this seems to be an altar to Mary and this seems to be an altar to uh, 
St. Joseph, and this seems to be an altar, altar to uh, an altar to uh, the patron saint of this church. Uh, you know, it depends on how big the the church is, how many side altars they have. But it seems as if the altars are all dedicated to somebody different, and even the altar stones within uh, that altar might dictate who the the saint is of that altar. Uh, so, are we then offering sacrifices to these various saints? And St. Thomas uses St. Augustine in uh, The City of God to point to the idea that uh, we do not have temples to anyone other than to God, and uh, we don't have a priesthood for these different uh, uh, saints. Uh, even the Virgin Mary, we might have something like the, the Oblates of Mary or uh, a number of religious communities that are dedicated to Mary, but their priesthood, their actual priesthood, is the priesthood of Christ, right? Uh, when they go to that altar, they are not offering a, a Marian Eucharist. They are not offering a Josephite Eucharist. They are offering the Eucharist of the incarnate Christ, right? Uh, so there's only one priesthood. Uh, there's not various priesthoods because, you know, well, Christ has a priesthood and Mary has a priesthood and Joseph has a priesthood doesn't work that way one priesthood in Christ um, and uh, he's talk, talking about the martyrs because those are the saints of the early church um, uh, the, the, the martyrs are dedicated uh, not to themselves but to God therefore if a church is named after uh, St. Bonaventure then uh, it, it is because of Bonaventure's relationship to God and Bonaventure pointing to God that when we point to Bonaventure, we point to Bonaventure pointing to God. Uh, the altar then is directed uh, in that church to God who Bonaventure worshipped. Uh, Bonaventure doesn't work, worship God and then we worship Bonaventure. Uh, Bonaventure worships God and we worship God. Uh, if, if we want to honor the saint, we honor uh, the God that they loved. Um, so, uh, again, uh, it's good. I, probably fairly obvious to people but I think it's still an interesting point uh, is sacrifice a special act of virtue uh, uh, sacrifice is a special act uh, deserving of praise and that it is done out of reverence for God so because this is in a virtue that isn't aimed at our own happiness it's not aimed at our own fulfillment this is an act uh, a sacrifice properly done is directed entirely to the reverence of God. If a person were to take an animal and take some part of the animal and burn it, well, this is a piece, this is something that has now been given to God, and they don't get something out of it materially. <laughs> They've lost something by it. So sacrifice requires, in some degree, some degree of loss, some degree of uh, handing it over, giving it away, giving it over to another. Um, because of this, uh, it's directed to God directly. If something's directed to God directly, then it becomes a, a special act, right? It's not a, a human act, but it's an act particularly for the divine. Therefore, it's a, a special act of virtue. Now, things are sacrificed in three ways, and I think this is important. This could also have been uh, pointed out much earlier, but um, that a sacrifice starts as an interior act. Again, you, you don't get to an exterior act until unless you first have had an interior act. If if you haven't desired to sacrifice something, you don't all of a sudden um, kill the animal. Then after the fact, decide it was a sacrifice. You know, it has to be intended to be a sacrifice. So the devotion and prayer part comes first, an interior element. Um, it's, in some ways, it, it, I don't think it's truly a, an act of um, sacrifice when it is only interior, because otherwise it would be prayer or devotion, right? right? It wouldn't be sacrifice, but sacrifice requires some act of uh, prayer and devotion. Uh, the second uh, is that the sacrifice in terms of the body, um, so in the form of martyrdom, abstinence, or uh, continency, con continency uh, which is 
chastity, uh, purity, sec particularly sexual purity, uh, abstinence is abstaining from something, particularly meat uh, or uh, fancy foods or some type of luxury. Right? We, we have abstinence during Lent. Uh, or the ex most extreme would be martyrdom, giving yourself uh, your whole body over uh, as a form of sacrifice. Uh, so these are three these are three examples and then uh, the last one is the belong our belongings so uh, if one were to um, give something to God uh, uh, you give a certain amount of money you give a, a gift you give some land you give whatever it is um, if it's to directly for God um, you know, some of this stuff is hard to hand to God because what is God going to do with land? What is God, God going to do with certain things? But uh, if one were to give something directly, maybe give, giving something up or giving something with the intention of giving it to God um, directly, then that is uh, properly sacrificed. One can also do it indirectly through, you know, giving alms to the poor, for example, would be a type of sacrifice because this is money that you don't have for yourself you've given it to another but you've given it to your neighbor if you've done it in the name of Christ uh, then it's a sacrifice to God uh, through the neighbor which uh, is interesting and, and good uh, I think Christ would be quite happy with that whoever gives a glass of water to one of the least of these in my name gives it to me right uh, some sense of that um, However, it, in some ways it's not as perfect in some ways because uh, if you give something to your neighbor, now your neighbor might feel the need to give something back to you or you might get a great deal of honor from them. You might get respect from them. It might create a friendship in a different way. Right? There's all types of things that could come out from giving something to another person versus uh, if you were to give it directly to God, then... Uh, that's a greater amount of faith, right? Because uh, God may pay you back for that, but not in this life, right? That this comes at the final judgment, so it's a bit tougher uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the sacrifice. Therefore, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the merit in it. Are all people bound to? give sacrifice. Now this is the final article in this question uh, and because St. Thomas considers sacrifice part of natural law then yes because natural law is natural for all people. It's part of that kind of universal nature that we all share. So because it's universal therefore we all are called to give sacrifice. So St. Thomas says there are sacrifices in two ways. Uh, says first that inward sacrifice that devout mind uh, sacrificing your passions your pride your your sinfulness all right so in that regard yeah there's a level of sacrifice in an internal way which we are all called to right we are all called to that now the second one in the external way really depends on one's status uh, and I think this is a good and interesting point. You know, if you were uh, a Jewish person uh, in under the old Old Testament laws, you were under a covenant, and the covenant that they had with God required certain things. There were precepts uh, of sacrifice, so um, sacrificing a, a dove, uh, for example, when Mary and Joseph uh, were. Uh, presenting Jesus in the temple, they uh, they offered a, a do they offered doves. Um, th this is all written out in the law of Moses. Well, this is very good uh, for Jewish people, but this uh, but people who were uh, Persians, they might not have been under that uh, law. You know, somebody who was in China had never heard of the old law, the Old Testament law. They weren't part of the covenant. Because they weren't part of the covenant, they're not held to the laws, the precepts of that covenant. So therefore, uh, were people in China during the third century required to offer sacrifice to God? Yes, because universally we are. Were they supposed to follow the temple rituals of the 
Jewish people? No, because they weren't Jewish people, <laughs> and they were under they were under that covenant. Uh, so if you are Jewish, you were now under Christianity. You are expected to give sacrifices in other ways, more spiritual than um, physical, in a, in a lot of ways. So so um, we're called to sacrifice in in many spiritual ways, but not we do, we don't have a temple. We don't have a, a, a a sacrifice uh, of animals. Uh, Christ is the high priest, and he's the sacri uh, the the altar, and he is the the sacrifice. So, uh, because of that, we don't have uh, additional sacrifices. Uh, we can participate in the one sacrifice through the mass, but we don't have adi these additional sacrifices. Um, and really, this is God's sacrifice to us. It's not our sacrifice to God. Um, so, you know, our, our ways are abstaining from meat or some something during Lent or uh, uh, abstaining from sin, right? There, there's things we do, but not the, the same things that the Jewish people did. And if people were part of other cultures that weren't Christian or, or Jewish, uh, then they might be called to some other type of standards. And he doesn't, St. Thomas doesn't say if they are bound to follow the principles of, you know, if you're a Muslim, do you have to follow the Muslim rules of sacrifice? St. Thomas doesn't say that. But there is some degree that everybody should be making some type of sacrifice because, of his, again, his view that this is part of universal law. Um, now, everybody might not know it explicitly, uh, but it is implicit because uh, everybody is called to some form of implicit faith. Uh, and we talked about this already uh, previously under faith, um, we are all called to faith, whether we've heard uh, the good news or not. There's something uh, interior within each of us that's called to it. Uh, so in conclusion, <laughs> the four articles. Uh, the sacrifice to God is part of the, uh, the law of nature. It's part of natural law. So therefore, it's all people are called to this type of sacrifice, giving sacrifices in various ways, whether it's um, spiritual or in terms of our bodies or in terms of our belongings, but we do it in some way. Sacrifice should be offered to God alone. Uh, any sacrifices offered to someone other than the one true God would be to, uh, uh, subject to death, right? <laughs> the, the, it maybe not being killed, but the, the, it doesn't have any type of spiritual um, benefit to praying for uh, to a non-existent God or a, a false God. Um, sacrifice is a special act of virtue because it's directed at God himself, uh, God alone. Therefore, it's not part of some general virtue which makes us good people, but this is part of some element of the divine. Uh, and all people are bound to sacrifice again because it is part of that natural law and people might do it in various ways but they are all called to it in one form or another so uh, next time we will be looking at oblations <laughs>